are in a very exciting time, I think, of the base. I think that base is just still unexplored territory because it was developing much later than the other string instruments and went other ways. We still don't have a standard tuning, we still don't have a standard size instrument. Whatever instrument you pick up, it's set up in different ways. <laughs> So I met Frank in Rochester, 2013 convention, when I was uh, actually really having my debut. I had never been before to any ISB conventions. I was put right away as a headliner mm. on recommendation of Nicholas Walker, in fact. And so Frank Proto was in attendance and I played the nine variants on Paganini. And uh, that's how we met. And about a year later, we started talking about the project, maybe he writing me some piece. I didn't honestly believe that it would happen so soon because I knew he's in demand and people asking him uh, amazing musicians that he wrote for. You know, and he's busy all the time. But nevertheless, it did happen. So in 2015, he wrote this sonata number no. three which I had pleasure to premiere with Evan Mitchell at uh, Colorado, which was the next ISB convention. And right after that, we did um, uh, that recording project. And we just took the, since our re um, recital program was consisting of new compositions, there was Dubignon Sonata written for Thierry. Uh, however, at this point, never recorded. Um, plus, there was a composition that we uh, played also as a premiere, which won at the David Walter composition competition of the ISB, where I was asked to judge the summer before. Mm. And I'm happy I did, because I, I threw that, that was my thought. How, you never know if I maybe pick up something, it doesn't matter if it wins or not, but maybe I want to include this to my repertoire. So these three pieces we uh, featured in the recording, having a little encore of the composition that uh, another Dutch composer that I collaborated with several times, Hill Meiring, wrote for me the ultimate workout. Uh, I also played yeah. around in different places. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, uh, that it is on YouTube, <laughs> everybody can thing. see. <laughs> 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 yeah, so um, this just the first movement we record from that work, as is to have sort of an encore, which became a very nice one hour long program. Um, and so it is released as, as a DVD film and the same, so it's the same, so to speak, audio track as a mm. CD also. I don't mm, set any limits for me as to which direction musically the piece should go. If I, if I like the piece for whatever reason, w is it the form, is it architecture, is it uh, the way it sounds? Like, and when I heard Eclore for the first time, it hooked me because it starts in, in the high only with harmonics, almost sounding like a whatever flute or something, and then goes to the depth of the instrument. So you almost have like three instruments in one piece. And this hooked me when I, okay, I want to play this piece. This is something I, in the same way in Regreps of Georgi mm -hmm. Makoshvili, uh, where he really so beautifully um, um, presents music that comes close to from where he comes. It's his folk dance elements, the rhythmic uh, element, of course. And I think there's just great potential in, in, the, in the resonance of the bass to explore this.
I really uh, find it very inspiring to be able to help young people and recognize some of their problems and identify with this. Some of them I had myself mm -hmm. and it's always different, uh, as you know, teaching. Some people you see very clearly what's the problem, some you have to take more time. But it's a very engaging process that um, helps us teachers grow too, of course. <laughs> I come from Poland originally, and I started my education as a pianist very early. I was six, um, very traditional start of education, like it is in Eastern European countries, of course, very conservative. I had the old ear training and theory classes and everything. And uh, I was not the best pianist, I think. <laughs> um, and my teacher actually suggested to me after a few years that I might think about changing the instrument. I was always get, getting a slightly lower grades because I played too easy repertoire. I was technically not very efficient. And I honestly don't remember exactly why and how it happened, but my dad suggested the double bass. Why don't you try the double bass? Because all kids in my school at the time, also very conservative approach, they either played piano or violin. Yeah. I didn't want to play violin, and I think it was too, too late when I was 11 mm -hmm. to start violin. It's quite late, really. And then um, I also s I've also heard some, some kids playing cello, and I thought that this is the ugliest sounding instrument because <laughs> they all played so out of tune. <laughs> <laughs> ugly sound, and I thought, th I never want to play this instrument again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ne never, ever. Mm -hmm. And the bass was something that um, I didn't know much about. I, I've, I've seen it in orchestra, of course, and I've seen it in a jazz band, but I've actually seen it playing. I never heard it individually, how it really sounds. And it got me interested, but then also I went just to see an um, like accompaniment class of older colleagues of mine. Uh, they were like 20, so they were all gurus for me, of course. Mm -hmm. I was just 11. And they played, I don't know if it was Dragonetti or it was one of those pieces with the high harmonics. And I was like, wow, so these high notes are on this instrument also. Because I wasn't surprised with the low ones, but then the high ones. And I was waking up the other day and thinking, did I dream of it? that they played this high note there on this instrument. I said, but yeah, but it was really there. Uh -huh. And that was uh, my first love of the, of the bass. And I really got into it. You know, I, I, I played electric guitar at the same time. Um, and at some point I went more seriously into bass. I, I found the right teacher after the first three years. And from that point I was working really seriously on the bass. And I, I knew that I'm, I would become a bass player. Mm.
I had first finished my education in Poland. I was um, actually studying with the same teacher for about eight years, but the first few years were in Poland. Uh, and he was, uh, uh, well, you don't know the name, but I can mention his name was Kujawa. It sounds very Japanese to some people, mm -hmm. but he was Polish. He was the oldest, um, actually, like a senior teacher, professor of bass in the Polish school. And he was a very experienced teacher at the time. He was just beginning of his 60s. And uh, he helped me, not just with uh, the technique, but first thing and the most important thing he did, he really taught me how to love the instrument and love the music I played. And the things that I played at the time were probably quite simple pieces of music, but he never, ever... Uh, said to me, you know, our repertoire is not like the high standard or, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to end up in orchestra anyway or something. Like, you're never going to be solist. He always just uh, embraced and, and encouraged that feeling of, you know, this is the great music we can do on the, on the bass and it's such an interesting instrument. He was really advocate of that. So, and another thing, he was really like my mentor in every mm. sense. He was almost like my second father. It's a very probably old school kind of approach of a teacher. He was really full-time teacher. And uh, he helped me to finish my school uh, actually quicker. I did my two last years in one year. Um, because meanwhile, he got a proposal to become professor at the Hochschule in Düsseldorf in Germany. And so that led to the fact that I moved to Düsseldorf when I was 18 and then I was his student for another, I believe, four years mm -hmm. there at the other Hochschule, so which I think was very lucky turn of events for me because from there everything else emerged. <laughs> After six years, I felt that I needed a refreshment and change. Also, probably because I got the job very soon, very early. I was very young, and I felt that I still, perhaps, could do other things. While the orchestra job is a compromise, because it, um, it depends probably on the orchestra too. But uh, I used to have some time off, but everything was quite fixed. This is something I tried in my recitals in, in the last couple of years. As my knowledge of repertoire expanded, I really want for any recital to just tell a story from beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. 